the classroom, often we are not seeing them engaged in the ways that they need to be. And so my challenge for us today is to really think outside of the box and how to reach these students that we are literally missing because we are not looking at things in a way that they need us to see them. Um, I spoke with Ms. Kimberly and other educators about you know, some of the materials that we use in our classroom. And often, um, because we are working in various communities, we don't necessarily immediately think about those needs of the students and what they need as far as representation. I know um, representation matters is a cash phrase that's been circulating around a lot um, recently, especially in light of the uh, showcasing of so many uh, events in our communities in regards to racism. Um, but representation, I, I don't know if we realize the impact of what it does for our students, being able to see themselves. Um, classrooms have many different races, many different cultures that are not often reflected in the materials that are or have been used in the past for students. Um, when I think back now, it, it's interesting because I'm tutoring a little girl and she just turned seven and she's reading her first chapter book. And it's the same chapter book that I read when I was in her grade many, many decades ago. And not, there's nothing wrong with the book, but I'm thinking we are in the year 2022 and we are using the exact same books from God knows when. I, I honestly can't even tell you when these books came out. But if you think about certain books that we refer to as classics, we think Huckleberry Berry Finn, we think Edgar Allan Poe, we think Charlotte's Web, which is the book that I'm talking about right this moment. But those books don't often reflect or represent everyone as a whole. I had an experience in a classroom, which is, um, what led me to here. So in this classroom, I was working at a private school. Um, I had a classroom of about 26 students. And of those 26, it was predominantly boys. Um, and of those 26, only about four of those students actually knew how to read. And this was a sixth grade class. And of those four, about two of them had reading comprehension. And it was eye-opening for me um, because I'd had an experience where I was working with homeschooling groups and I was working with other groups where children were not in such dire straits where we had a chance to, or I had a chance to work with them from a small age. So I knew they had a really reading, really good reading ability. And so I was a little spoiled. And so coming to this classroom, and seeing the reality of something that's going on in a lot of classes in the nation is was very, um, wow. It, it, it made me think about, well, what can I do? Because the statistics right now, um, if we look them up according to the Department of Education, there are approximately 32 million adults in the United States who cannot read at all. And about 130, million people are reading below the fifth grade level. That's a lot of people. And that is a large percentage of the United States population. And in my intimate settings of the classroom and e even tutoring, I'm having opportunity to witness some of these things firsthand. So in a group of five children that I was tutoring, looking at the percentages, one of those parents literally could not read at all. And so she uh, was referred to me for services and she sought out my help because she didn't have the ability to help her child to be able to read or help her with any of her assignments. And another of the parents are actually uh, several of the other parents, at least two of the five were reading below fifth grade level and admitted, one admitted that they couldn't read or didn't learn how to read until they were in college level uh, grades and um, 
you know, this is something that is more common than we think. And so not only just looking at the statistics, I was looking at these people who were in front of me in, in real time and having conversations with family members who admitted that, wow, you know what? This person that I know, I discovered they can't read. Um, I have a sister who works at Amazon and one of the security guards there who is a head of security um, couldn't read. And, and a lot of the people who are living as what we call functional illiterates are hiding the fact that they cannot read because they don't want to be discovered because there is a stigma and there's embarrassment associated with it. But what I wanted to address today is the reality of how in our classroom settings, we can help to offset some of this by introducing things that are actually going to reach or finding ways outside of the box to help these students. When we have books that have representation um, of the students, um, can you all pull up um, the picture a representation for me? Um, I, I chose comic books in the classroom because it, uh, of the impact and how it helped me to reach a lot of the, well, some of the students who could not reach at all. So um, yes, I went as far as making a whole costume <laughs> and I have, um, done some one-on-one -on -one tutoring and um, entered the classroom with these Tuskegee Air comic books um, in the classroom because this was their first time having an opportunity to see um, a books with people that look like them and somebody that they can relate to. Um, you all can take the picture down. And even though those uh, young ladies are cute, and they're young, the students I was actually using the comics for were not children that young. They were high school students. Two in particular, um, one doing a little worse than the other. One of them was is reading at about a third grade level and he's in the ninth grade. And the other um, was not even reading at a second grade level. And I literally had to go and teach him teach both of them and review with them sight words, word family words, um, the foundational things that they needed to do. And I was like, well, how do I help these high school students who are just now learning how to read? And how do I give them a book by Edgar Allan Poe that is definitely gonna be challenging to them and nothing that they can relate to? So I needed to find a happy medium. And I discovered um, Tuskegee Airs Comics, which is a comic book written by uh, Greg Vernon and Marcus Williams. And I chose comic books because comic books has a range of vocabulary for high school, uh, a different range. And it has the pictures and the visuals that can help with that. And also it allows me a chance to give them the opportunity to not feel like they're doing a baby book. Um, it was something really cool. And I was using the vocabulary in there as opposed to just giving them a regular list of words to memorize and try to figure out and study. Using those words, using those as their terms to define, using those words in sentences. And there was so much success. They were excited about learning. They were uh, learning the material. They were having comprehension. And it was because I decided to think outside of the box and use comic books in the classroom as opposed to using what would have been considered the book list given to the teachers. And I wanted to segue over and give Ms. Kimberly a conversation about some of her experiences because I didn't grow up in a situation where I had anybody really encouraging me to read. And so having a situation with some of these students where they don't have the support at home necessarily, not because the parents don't wanna support them, but maybe they can't. It might be a situation where their parent can't read and they don't know that their parent cannot read. Or 
the parents might be working and they don't have anybody to help them out with uh, reading and getting those 10 to 20, 30 minute uh, reading blocks that they need for vocabulary building and um, literacy. But I wanted to segue to Ms. Kimberly so she could share her story about her experience with literacy and the classroom. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Bernice. Um, so I, uh, I definitely had the background with my family growing up. I had a lot of educators in my family, is uncles, aunties, uh, both sides of my family, but a lot of educators, a lot of people who love to read, who were constantly introducing myself and my siblings to books at a young age. But, you know, sometimes you just don't always have the time to sit down and read a book. And, you know, both my parents worked and times that I would have with my mother, she may be reading the paper, going through whatever section. And I was always just interested in being, doing whatever she was doing, not reading something by myself. And so she started just handing me those comic sections of the newspaper. And then I really started kind of getting into it. She would just take them and cut them out and then be like, OK, let me give her something to do for a little while. Try to put it back in the right order. And then you can see that the picture telling a story itself. And then you start learning those words and remem remembering those words. And next thing I knew or next thing my parents knew, I was reading it four and five years old just off of that practice of doing that every week and putting those together and she reading it to me and then I'm going back trying to read it myself and memorizing a lot of words and then starting to put those phonics that you start learning in pre-k and kindergarten together with the words that I was seeing there um, so she just used what worked and I don't think it was really an intentional this is going to be my time to teach Kimberly how to read but just out of the consistency of doing it I was able to pick up the words and memorize a lot of the reading before I actually started uh, deep into kindergarten where you start learning uh, really how to read. So, um, you know, I had a little bit of a jump just because of that introduction. And then through um, teaching for as long as I have, talking to parents who just tried other things. Everybody's not, a uh, parent isn't actually an educator. So we just do what kind of comes natural. When they see their student was struggling, I had a student, uh, a parent who, she knew her, her child had some issues concentrating and focusing on reading. So she was like, I'm not going to just give him a book and expect him to read it because he may be all over the place in his mind. But making up sentences and talking about things that he was familiar with. So he was really interested in what she was doing in the kitchen. So she would write a few sentences about uh, mom chose whatever pot to cook this dish in. And so he was interested in that. So he's reading those sentences. Oh, he's really interested in dad and what's going on with the car. So, oh yeah, dad washed his car. And, and so she put those in sentences that he could see what those words looked like and read them and then find that way that he was relating to it. So, you know, definitely we want to give them books and show them images that they can relate to in a, a classroom setting that, you know, you're doing books that, you know, again, they may not always be on that classic book list, but they have characters and situations that our students can relate to and then at home you can even relate on a more personal level to is just you and your child and you know exactly what they're into and what's going to get them excited about reading those sentences and those words because they they understand that oh yeah i know about dad's car i was just riding in it i was with him helping him wash it so now i'm writing sentences about that and learning those words and learning learning how to um even express myself better in what it is that I see and what it is I enjoy to do. Um, and so I'm, as a teacher, I'm learning that those students that have that some sort of uh, foundation on this is what I enjoy and this is what I enjoy reading. When I pull in out the books, they're not shying away or feeling intimidated by it. because like, oh, yeah, I want to read more about that. I want to get a better understanding. But if we don't give them something to like about reading, then it's always the hardest topic. I, I found myself saying it in a, a parent conference just recently. I was like, you know, I don't mind being a bad guy because I know once they get it and they build that love of reading, it's going to help them in every other class. Because, yeah, you love math now, when all you got to do is write your ones, your pluses and minuses, learn that multiplication table. But now when they start putting those multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction uh, questions in a word problem, now you're going to wish you had those phonics and that understanding of reading down. You know, you like science when it's all about doing the experiment, but now that I have to read and research why this experiment is going to go the way that it goes or why this is something worthy of experimenting on because I have to do the research, which is reading, 
You're not going to love it so much. So all of our classes are going to benefit from our students being strong readers. So um, you want that class to be fun. You want that class to be interesting and reading something that they love.